Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Gemini Portable Monitor, which is a 15.6 inch display, which is a fairly versatile little device that's generated a decent amount of attention during a Kickstarter campaign, which runs through February 18th, 2019. It's eventually going to sell for about $299 and up. Uh, $299 gets you a version with similar specs to this one, which is a 1920 by 1080 pixel touchscreen display. It's a matte IPS screen with decent viewing angles and not a lot of glare reflected, as you can see here. Uh, or for $499, there's going to be a 4K version. Folks who got in during the Kickstarter campaign are going to be able to get lower prices. Uh, earlier birds were able to get one for as little as $159, and for that I think it's a pretty great little device. For $299, it might be a little bit of a tougher sell, but it also depends on what it is that you're looking for. Now I think in terms of why it's generated a lot of interest, there's a couple of reasons for that. It's fairly compact, so as I mentioned, it's got a 15.6 inch display, but you'll notice there's fairly small bezels around the sides here. It's supposed to weigh around two pounds, according to Kickstarter. My demo unit weighs 2.6. I don't know if that's something where they'll adjust the spec uh, or adjust the weight. Uh, either way, 2.6 isn't ridiculously heavy. It's got a built-in battery, so it can run for uh, a couple of hours at a time without necessarily stopping to plug it in. I've been getting around three and a half hours of runtime out of it, as opposed to the five hours of promised battery life. It might depend on how you adjust the settings and so forth. And it also has a whole bunch of different inputs. So let's go ahead and uh, just unplug it for a moment here so I can show you the little tour. You'll notice here that the uh, we've got a status indicator that lets us know that it's turned on, but nothing's plugged in. That was blue a moment ago. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the screen and show you that now it turns off. Uh, up here on the top, we've got stereo speakers, one on this side, one on the other side. If you have a decent laptop that you're plugging it into, odds are your laptop speakers are going to sound better. These aren't very loud. They don't have a lot of bass, but I suppose it's nice to have the option. Uh, we've got a power button or power adapter down here on the bottom. And this demo unit was sent to me. Uh, it's a pre-release demo unit, I should point out. It was sent to me with this 12 volt, three amp power adapter. Due to a Kickstarter stretch goal that has been reached, it might not ship with that. It might ship with a USB Type-C power adapter instead. So we've got a USB Type-C port here, micro USB, micro USB, mini HDMI, mini HDMI. Again, through a Kickstarter stretch goal, might ship with full-sized HDMI ports. But you do have three different input uh, options here, the two HDMIs and the USB Type-C. I didn't have a USB Type-C display adapter, so I've only used it as an HDMI screen, but by plugging uh, when you just plug something into HDMI, it works as a display. When you also connect your computer via a USB Type-C cable, then you have access to the touchscreen option as well. If we take a look at the other side, we've got a whole bunch of different buttons here. I'll show you what those do in a moment. The status indicators I mentioned, and uh, which actually these guys show you the battery level. And then there's a headphone jack down here on the bottom. If we take a look at the back, it gives you a key for what the power or what these buttons do. We've got power plus minus settings and input switch. And then just a reminder that that's a headphone jack, not a power jack, I suppose. Um, it also comes with this wireless remote control that allows you to uh, uh, uses a coin cell battery and allows you to adjust certain settings. The version that I received is in Chinese. I have no idea if that's something that's going to be resolved on the uh, on the full shipping version, but it's not too hard to just use these buttons instead. So uh, let's go ahead and actually let me show you the kickstand first and then we'll go ahead and plug it back in. Uh, as I mentioned, this is pre-release hardware. So there's a couple of things that I'm hoping are resolved. Uh, if you look, you can see that the back panel doesn't necessarily fit quite as tightly as it could. Um, and the kickstand supports up to 180 degrees of rotation, so you should be able to prop it at a whole bunch of different angles. But while it works nicely up to around 120 degrees, if you go all the way down here, it tends to sort of lose tension and plop down onto the table. Uh, I don't know if that will be resolved eventually as well, but if you wanted to sort of use it as a slightly angled surface for, I don't know, touch sensitive applications, then touching the screen is definitely going to make it fall at least on this demo hardware. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in because that's where things get really interesting. I've got here a 13 inch Acer laptop. I've also used it with a uh, HP Spectre, which is kind of fun because what you wind up with is a 2.6 inch monitor and a 2.8 inch laptop, I mean, uh, not inch, pound, 2.6 pound 
monitor and a 2.8 pound laptop, uh, sort of more than doubling your display space when you uh, when you look at the 13.3 inch versus the 15.6 inch displays. Uh, so it's kind of nice to be able to take those things with me. It is, as you can see here, a little bit tricky to fit the two screens next to each other. So if you're working in a fairly uh, small space, say you're going to a coffee shop and you're just sort of at a table for one, it can actually be a little hard to find enough room for both of these devices to fit side by side. Um, so right now I've got it set up to extend my desktop. So you can see I can move things from one screen to the other. And that allows me to do things like say, I don't know, watch a video on one screen while looking at websites on the other screen. And we've got this touchpad with support for multi-touch gestures. Uh, you can also do left and right mouse clicks over here on the side. And, a and you can see touch does work. And just as a further demonstration of that, let's go ahead and uh, just fire up a quick. So it works as a touchscreen monitor. It does what it's supposed to do. And you can see when it is on, you can see our battery indicators over here. Now that's important because that's the only real indication you have of how much battery life there is. So if you carry your power adapter with you, you're good. You can just sort of use it indefinitely, although it is one more thing to carry around with you. In terms of uh, running off of battery power, you plug it into your laptop, you extend your display, you have extra screen space so that you can, say, watch a video and edit a document or vice versa, or just view more things on the screen at once. Um, and you can work for a couple of hours before it's going to give out on you. It does last for about three and a half hours in my experience, and there's no warning when it's going to die. Uh, it's not drawing power from the laptop when I'm just plugging it in as an HDMI monitor, but my laptop does have to drive two displays, so that actually does run down the battery a little bit more quickly. So with my HP Spectre uh, X360 13T, which has a very long name, I know, uh, basically it's my compact convertible HP laptop, it tends to get around seven or eight hours of battery life when I'm just using it as a laptop. When I plug in the external display, it gets more like four hours of battery life. So the fact that this only runs for three and a half hours is, I guess, fine, because between the two of them, I'm not going to get all day battery life. Um, but if I can carry my uh, cables with me to charge them, it's not as, as big of an issue. Uh, it doesn't support automatic screen rotation, but you can, if you really wanted to, flip it over and use it as a portrait mode display. It doesn't, uh, since it's not automatic, what that means is, uh, where's my mouse? You're gonna have to go into your display settings and manually rotate the screen to portrait mode. And make sure that you're selecting the right screen that you wanna flip to portrait mode first. There we go, so now it's in portrait mode and that allows you to do things like have more space vertically. Or uh, it's a little bit clunky to do it this way for a couple of reasons. First of all, you no longer have as much control over the angle. It's basically 90 degrees or bust. And second of all, as you can see, we've got a bunch of cables sticking out from the top of the screen, and then at the bottom, the buttons are actually smooshed against it. So it'd be nice if the buttons were on this side maybe instead, because it is kind of easy to accidentally adjust the volume or other settings uh, just by pushing this down onto the table. If we switch back to landscape orientation, I'll show you what those buttons do. So again, we've got the power button. We've also got an input switch button which allows us to toggle between uh, multiple sources. Auto select tends to work just fine for me most of the time. And then you could also go into settings to adjust your uh, picture, display, color, you know, backlight, brightness, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it can take a moment, you know, a little while to sort of get used to what all of those things do, but it is nice to have those options. So this is basically what it looks like if you're using it in extended desktop mode. Now, of course, you could also use it instead of extending a desktop to uh, duplicate or mirror your desktop. And one reason you might want to do that is say you've got a small screen, like 
this GPD micro PC with the six inch display um, and no touch screen. Plug it in and now we've got a duplicated display on a much, much larger screen. So instead of a six inch display, we're looking at a 15.6 inch display. And that allows us to have more space when we're doing things like uh, typing documents or playing games. So let's go ahead and fire up a game that I've been playing for a little while. And by mirroring the display, I have the option of either using touch base controls here. There's a continue game, or I can just, or actually uh, the keyboard and touchpad just rolls, or I can go up here and just use the touch screen to interact. So, generally speaking, uh, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. I think that it is nice to be able to use multiple displays, uh, whether you want a bigger screen or an extra screen or just, you know, you wanted that extra space. It can be a little bit clunky, uh, as I mentioned, if you're, say, going to a coffee shop or another place where you might not have a lot of room to spread out. It's not the sort of thing you're probably easily going to do on an airplane or a train. Um, but if you are used to using multiple displays when you're working at home or working at the office, it's nice to have that option of when you're on the go being able to do it as well. Uh, or if you wanted to, I don't know, show presentations, you could sort of do back to back. You could have set up two laptops or two devices and you could monitor your spreadsheet or your uh, PowerPoint or whatever it is that you're looking at here while other people could look on the other side. So it does add some functionality. Uh, it does also mean you've got this little rat's nest of wires that are going to run back and forth, and this is without either of these plugged into a power source. If you wanted to uh, run for more than a couple of hours at a time, you are going to need to carry some power adapters with you. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign, another stretch goal besides some changes to the, the layout or the buttons, and not the buttons, to the uh, ports, uh, it's supposed to come with a case. This demo unit that I received did not include any sort of carrying case, which means I have to put it pretty carefully into my backpack to make sure I don't scuff it. Uh, I put it in and then I sort of cover it up with uh, my laptop sleeve or something. So I've only actually taken it out a couple of times because I'm a little bit worried about that. So, um, you know, given some of those uh, concerns, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you have a decent case that covers it. You're going to want to make sure uh, that you're okay with the battery life limitations, and you're going to want to make sure that uh, adding something that weighs two plus pounds to your bag is something that you're willing to do. But once you do those things, if you have places that you're going to go that you want to have extra screen space, it uh, it really does seem to uh, fit the bill. Uh, touch works. The uh, screen looks pretty good, and uh, it is a relatively compact solution for uh, for folks who are looking for a sort of multiple display kind of setup. So that is a look at the Gemini portable display available from Kickstarter should be shipping in May and you can find more details about it at lilliputing.com or you can check out the description for this video on YouTube for a link to our preview at lilliputing.com and a link to that Kickstarter campaign as well. Uh, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.